What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Morning Show for Tuesday, April 4th. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the pure one, Tim Geddes. Let's say most. Wearing one of them blue shirts. Bring out your Wear blue one eyes. of them blue shirts. That's what I like, that's what I like that's to do. What I, do. What I like to do. Now, Kevin, what went wrong there? I don't know, man. Motherfucker hit, is what I heard. I hit the fucking button. You hit the fucking button. And instead of going, it just didn't. Just didn't do it. Just but, didn't I already, it. but I already hit the other button, so the light, you know, you guys would appear as the lights are going. You did great with that. Then mm-hmm. I looked over, and I was like, oh, no. It's Keep in mind, darkness. again, if the lights don't it aren't up, nobody thinks anything's wrong yet. So if you don't say motherfucker. Like yeah, that. nobody would know that until you go no, motherfucker. because then it's just you guys sitting on the screen with the lights off. Yeah? You think that's the worst thing these people have seen from us? No, but that looks stupid. Huh. It looks dumb. Does it? Says says the Kev Cam when you're looking and you're just looking. Yep, that's that's a, that doesn't look what? dumb. What? You look dumb. What Kevin. part looks dumb? You looking off screen, talking to us the other way. Which way am I looking? That Did way. Did you like it when it was mirrored? I don't like anything about this. Oh, I man. love the Kev Cam. I love what Kevin Coella does. I love this morning show. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, everybody. Hold it together. It's it's been held. So now, when did you realize? Because here's the thing. I've complimented you in. Private in our private yeah, times, left and right, I've mm-hmm. complimented you a lot on the fact that uh, you know he's talking about your baby blues and all this bullshit, and I didn't really believe it. And then it, I do notice a distinct difference. Kev, I'm going to need Tim's one between when he wears a bl- uh, regular shirt and he wears a blue shirt, and the blue shirt somehow does bring out the blue in his eyes more. That's how that's how it works. I, how did you learn this though? I never would have learned that because uh, I have gr- I have hazel eyes. When you're you know oh, f- average looking like me, <laughs> what the. F- Fuck just happened. <laughs> Kevin saw that I was calling. I was I was giving the subliminal that I wanted my one, so he hit it. Nothing happened. Then he said, "Damn it!" He pounded a bunch of buttons. He just went black. <laughs> <laughs> I also learned something new about the camera. What did you learn today about the cameras? I, let me test it out. He's learning something. Yup, there it is. There it is. Yeah. I, damn sure. It. No, I guess it doesn't work. Now the way. audience can hear you pounding on the buttons, right? That gets picked up yeah. on your mic. Yeah. This yeah, whole well, frantic certainly. thing. If I double click. The preview screen it gives me access to the second set of cameras. It doesn't matter. You guys don't understand. Like, we don't understand. Ca- ca- cameras, cameras eight through sixteen. Okay. That aren't necessarily plugged in, but. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I see what you're saying. Now. It's exciting for me, guys. Because when we get cameras me. eight through sixteen, that's the ones you'll be using a lot. Eight through sixteen. Yeah. When we get that next, one day. I mean, you next... laugh, but right now, one through eight are now occupied. One through eight. One through eight. Oh shit! Okay, so we yeah. got the three here. Yep. There's what used to be the Skycam. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still Skycam. Don't talk shit about it. It's no, right well, there. there's the one that used to be. We still have Skycam. That's a new Skycam. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Right? So you're saying yeah. yeah, but the one that used to be Skycam. So that's six plus Kevcam. Yep. A seven. Uh huh. Plus the whatever console we want to play with. It's not a camera. I'm that comes in as a camera feed. I want eight to sixteen cameras. And plus SDI feed to the. Wall. All right, I'm done with this conversation. Here's what I need you to do, Tom Hawkins. Kevin, give me my one. Tom Hawkins, I'm sure you're out there. I know you got a job now. And you're busy, but you still have. When I call out, I need you to clip out this. Do you do it? I need you to go back and discover at what point in the morning show slash kind of funny content I started needing makeup. Because I notice now, look, I got the oily, what? I got oily forehead. I got an oily, I got an oily. Look at all the shine on my forehead. That but never used to happen. Yeah, it did. No, I think it's just because we have the nicer lenses now. Oh, so you can see all the imperfections. Yeah, but you know, scars to you're beautiful, right? Scott. Oh, I know that song. It took yeah. me a second. Scars yeah. to you, beautiful. Is that what she says? Oh, like, yeah. Scars to your till you're beautiful. That sounds like a message you wouldn't want to give the kids. No, well, your, it's, your scars are beautiful. You know? Oh, that what she's saying. Sc- I think it's scars to your beautiful is what she's saying. Are you sure she's not saying scars till you're beautiful, indicating no. go have plastic surgery over yeah, and over again? Yeah, scars to your beautiful. Well, that doesn't make any sense. What's the name of the song? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Whatever. Now, like Alex, Alish, Alex, mm-hmm. Alisa yeah, right there. says, stop smoking cigarettes, Greg. He makes a great point. It's I very still don't feel point. right. How do you do this all the time, Kevin? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You you smoke all the time. You stop for a long time, and then but now you go out and you still smoke all the time with Cool Greg. 
Yeah, I know, but Paula says I need to stop. So. Oh, I was I was gonna play that new joke. I was gonna, I was gonna have the thing where we all tweet at Paula something, but we won't. Do oh, good. We're not gonna do that. No, Definitely no. don't do that. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're like, we were gonna do the normal thing. Friends. No one do it. No one do it. We're gonna do that normal thing, like when we told her she you were eating the salad. No, remember? <laughs> don't do that. That's the worst. Because I was eating a salad. That I know. Day. It's, it doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> she can never trust any of the internet chatter about you. And yeah. God forbid she'd ever come watch this show to try to find out what no, happened. No, no, no. Yeah. I actually actively try to stop her. We say a lot of awful shit, you know, that I've brought her not. Re- She's. Thing. I'm sure she hears worse on a daily basis from you. Yeah. No, yeah. way worse. 100%, way worse. right? There's a, there's a lot of people in the chat confused about the Scars to Your Beautiful thing. I'm talking about the song by Alisa Cara. Scars to Your Beautiful. And it's called Scars to scars Your Beautiful. Scars to Your Beautiful. Two with one O. Not Scars to, comma, You're Beautiful, as some people think I'm saying. Which, that doesn't even make sense. Don't look at the chat. The chat. This is important. The though. chat can't be true. They need to know. They need to know. It, it just seems so. In there, I am the cannonball. Who's a subscriber, saying things that can't possibly be true. You're right. I'm looking Tim at is it, checking right. on it though. There's no way. What, what is? What is I don't, don't worry. We're it. not even going to talk about it yet. Go ahead. And click on the news tab. No. Okay. You if, you, if you have a link, I am cannonball. You're lying. He's Great back saying time. it again. The Invincible movie announced. I don't, I don't, I feel like we would see it somewhere. He's full of shit. Go to Twitter, the real source of the news. If you think you're Rick rolling us, you are. That's not how that works, Tim. What do you mean? That's him sending us a link that we're like excited about. Dude, it's 2017, and man. We, the there's no ba- there's the nothing to backing up here. There's nothing to back this up. There's nothing to back this up. I don't like that. I don't like getting like Rickrolled on Invincible movies. No. Not no. one bit. That's not, but that wasn't Rickrolling. The amount of people buying. He was catfishing The you. goddamn piranha plant. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, Fink Geek. It's like, out of all the, the sponsorships we well, got, Nintendo it's like, that's the one we didn't that's get. That's not a sponsorship. <laughs> okay, I'm making sure that's we understand. We're being clear. That's, that's what I, 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 I wish it was. Chad's the big hit. Chad's Chad, king. Chad is the big Chad, hit. The Chad king is what I like to call plant. King Koopa around here. He's the King Koopa. Man. Yeah, a lot of people tweeting at Think Geek and us because they bought Chad's. I saw Zyger The Hollywood Chad. Reporter Twitter. The Hollywood Reporter. Is this the same guy saying it? Is it on the cannonball no, again? No, it's something different now. Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God! <laughs> I can't even put it in the dock! Careful. Put it in the dock! Careful. Fuck the Be chairs! Careful. Fuck oh everything! God. Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! This is why fuck we it. don't have fuck wheels it. on our chairs. Fucking put it in the dock and open up the dock, Kevin! <laughs> Kevin! Ah! I'm putting it at the top of the dock, Kevin! Okay. No, I didn't! It's, in the, it's above the Scorpio news! Fuck the Scorpio news! It doesn't matter anymore! What? Where is it? Above the Scorpio! It's the first link! I, don't think I see you clicking on it! Where is it? Ah! Ah! Oh my god, if they don't cast Zac Efron! Oh my god! <laughs> I made a Greg Way about this forever ago. I was gonna publish the ukulele thing. We gotta re-promote this now, Tim. Oh god! Oh, we fucking did it! They said we couldn't do it! All it took was canceling the fucking comic book and here we are! Oh, shit. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> it was covered by the left. Yeah, that was a lot of crack. Don't smoke cigarettes, kids. HollywoodReporter.com is reporting. Who wrote this fucking thing? Bori's Kit. A made-up name is writing this and says, Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg to adapt Robert Kirkman comic Invincible for Universal. <sighs> <laughs> TV me to read? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, okay. <laughs> comic fans Rogen and Goldberg, the Goldberg, will write, direct, and produce a movie <laughs> adaptation with The Walking Dead creator also producing. Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg are teaming up with Robert Kirkman to bring The Walking Dead creator's comic book Invincible to the big screen for Universal Pictures. Rogan and Goldberg will write, direct, and produce the adaptation of the comic, which has been continually published since 2003. Kirkman will also produce... Stop! Hard stop! Hard fucking stop! 
Seth Rogen has the connection to Zac Efron. Yeah. It's all happening. It's coming true. Fuck you, Zyger. Fuck you. Why? <laughs> because somebody's got to get fucked today and it's him. Kirkman <laughs> <laughs> uh... also produced via his shingle Skybound, <laughs> Skybound Entertainment and his Skybound cohorts, David Alpert, Brian First, and Sean First. The project falls under Skybound's first look deal with Universal. James Weaver, a principal with Rogen and Goldberg at their banner, Point Grey, will also produce... Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting here. For nearly a decade, I've had to endure the what about Invincible question. As fans have watched The Walking Dead grow into the multimedia monstrosity it has become over the years, said Kirkman. The answer was always that we were waiting for the right time, to, the right team to partner with. That team has arrived. The esteemed misters Goldberg and Rogan have proven themselves to be top-notch directors with a keen collective eye for stunning visuals after slumming it by writing hit after juggernaut hit. Kirkman continued, Invincible's surprising, edgy, shocking, and oftentimes blood-soaked story couldn't be in more capable hands. With the team of Rogan, Goldberg, and Universal, I'm very confident this will be another superhero movie in a long line of superhero movies that continues to prove that it's a viable, thrilling genre that will keep people coming to the cinema for years to come. No, how, no matter how much damage it causes our body's mind and our most intimate relationship with those we love, we will not rest until Invincible is as great a movie as it deserves to be, said jointly Rogan and Goldberg in a statement. They made their debut as a directing team on 2013's Apocalypse Comedy, This Is The End, which was pretty damn good. Yeah. And followed that up with 2014's The Interview, which I didn't see. The comic book fans then adapted the Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon comic The Preacher, co-writing and directing the pilot and serving as executive producers on the AMC show, whose second season debuts in June. The duo is now working on directing and executive producing the Hulu comedy Future Man. So there you go. It's happening, Greg. Do you think it's actually happening? Because this, this is that type of news. Yeah, but I mean, here's the thing about this type of news, is that it's interesting because Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg have a connection to our nerdy universe in the way that, of course, they are also the ones who are adapting, or not adapting, helping bring uh, the console wars. Blake's book over yes. to a documentary that has been very quiet for a long time. So what's going on with that? Who knows? Um, I think the fact that the thing, what I think this one will happen. I think this one will happen because Robert Kirkman is still gold. You know what I mean? He still just prints money with, and obviously, Walking Dead. So to be able to put that from the creator of Walking Dead on the thing, not to mention it's the right time for this kind of movie. Yep. You know what I mean? Deadpool, Logan. Yep, exactly. Let's get Invincible. If you don't, if you don't watch Invin or read Invincible, then you don't know. It's incredibly violent, horribly gruesome. This will be an R-rated movie if they yep. do it right. Yep. And if they come out and say it's not R-rated, everybody's going to be like, well, be, this is wrong. Yeah. But it's the thing even, of, even the first arc needs to be R-rated. And that's the whole thing is that the, you figure what's great about it is the fact that the reason I love Invincible so much, and from when it started, why I loved it so much, is it took all the hero tropes and put them on their head. Mm -hmm. And th now that's where we are with Hollywood now, yep. right? Where everybody knows what a superhero film is supposed to look like. Now they can come out and make this. Make everything awesome. Don't fuck me on this one, please. Please don't fuck me. Hey, on this man. One. Shout out to whatever his name was in the chat. For Oh, I am. Uh, I don't even remember. I'm sorry. It's just I can't. We it's, were giving you a, shit. There's a lot going but on. But you came today. through. Cannibal. I'm kind of. Cannibal. I am Cannibal. I am Thank cannibal. you very much. Oh Jesus God! Hold on, we gotta we gotta change the whole show now. We gotta just fucking. <laughs> I gotta immediately. Ah, uh, hold on. There's a lot going on. Casting Invincible. I think it was episode 100. Invincible movie of Game Over Greggy show. Was it? I uh, thought it was a Gregway. What uh, I did? Oh, maybe it is. Alex Aziz in the the chat is talking about. I did a Gregway. That's five and a half minutes. That's probably the better. I'm gonna look up Game month. Over Greggy. I already show. got it. It's done. Nobody cares about your show. I won. I won. I went into money. No, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll put it up on my Twitter feed afterwards. I can't. I gotta breathe right now. You know what I mean? And we got a show to do here. I can't just. I can't just jet. Mm. Sorry to jet. I'm in a hurry. Invincible movie. Period. So a, a movie. I'm happy about this over a TV show. I feel like a TV show could be cool. Yeah, but they wouldn't have the budget for it. They wouldn't. This they're gonna. They could do right. And then you could get sequels. And I, that can make A trilogy of Invincible movies makes sense. 100%. However, a single Invincible movie could also make sense. No, I, I it mean... It could be enough. It could be enough to be like, I'm good with this. You know? I mean, so you're going to... I mean, spoilers a bit here. For it, you're going to... You're, spoils for Invincible here. You're going to take the entire Omni-Man, him turning, and then beating the shit out of Mark, and then what? You're going to cut it when he leaves? Yeah. All right, I, guess. I mean, it'd be an interesting, like, that's different. Yeah, that's for, different for sure. For a movie, Weird. and I feel like that's what they need to be. It can't just be, like, you know, save the world at the end of the movie. 
like every other superhero movie. But yeah, Zac Efron. <laughs> He's got to do it. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. Like they they work together. Oh, neighbors. Yeah, neighbors. One. Yeah. Man. Man. I mean, I'm sorry, everybody. I, I mean, I here's the thing. I didn't think I put in the best performance yesterday. Yeah. On this show, uh-huh. I was all stuffy and I was okay. like gross and I couldn't talk right. And I was like, I'm gonna come out and dominate today. Thought I had some good banter in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Then I just, it's over. I can't. And then even, bam! Now you're just distracted. I just, there's not. I mean, like, there's literally. <laughs> uh, what? Well, I thought we had a good show coming. We had yeah. some good, good things. We're gonna do the ukulele lots of news. stuff. Lots of news. Lots of news. And then you come out here and it's just like. Give you everything you ever What wanted. could be bigger than the Scorpio? We all said when we woke up this morning, yeah. and we were like nothing. And then the greatest superhero comic on earth. It gets announced a new comic book movie. Yeah. Good day. Kerman hasn't done movies, right? Like this is the the first um, adaptation of any no, of this that, stuff oh, as a oh, movie. No, adaptation. Yeah, what he Skybound produced that Air movie. Remember we had Christian oh, Cantona on right. here. Uh, but yeah, he hasn't done a movie movie. Yeah, all yeah, yeah, this yeah. stuff. Yeah. I love that because, I mean, you know, obviously they proved themselves with Walking Dead. Sure. Well, I mean, the other thing about it, too, of why I think this one will happen is that, and, like, I know they went into it there, the first look deal and all that shit. I'm not 100%, you know, how that deal works out. But Kirkman has always been, especially coming from Image, Mm creator-owned. So I'm sure he has control over what's happening. You know what I mean? It's not like he just gave the rights to uh, Rogan and Goldberg and they get to go do whatever the fuck they want now. Mm. Let's get into the news. I mean, can we? Is that possible? Or is do we there, just is need... There, is there any more to say just about need, this? I mean, what else? I mean, we could recast the movie right now. You know what we I mean? We could. I'm and, down. Do you want to do that? No, no, we shouldn't. That should okay. be a topic, if anything. But okay, okay. Can't breathe right now. I got, nothing in, I got nothing in my it, chest. You know what I mean? Invincible's been good recently. Last couple issues. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan. Well, it's because they're finally finishing everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, just, I can't believe what's happening here. Mm-mm. All right, here's what, here's what I do. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shake it off, and I'm going to do some shadow boxing in the background. You read okay. the ad for the Blue okay. Apron thing. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high-quality ingredients make a real difference, so it's important to know where your food comes from for less than $10 per person, per meal. Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Greg. Yeah. You like that Blue Apron? I do. You know that. You, you know, know I'm that, a, that Hashtag with cooking with Greggy. Uh, when I fell in love with cooking... And I actually got serious about it for Christmas two years ago, I think. My mom bought me the Blue Apron thing, and I started doing that, too. And it gave, you, it gave me a lot of good ideas. I still do use. There you go. That's, this, this, this is true, as I'm sure you know, because you're the same people who come by every day. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash KFMS. It's the you know, acronym of the kind of free morning show. You will love how good it feels and taste to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash KFMS. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kind of Funny Morning Show each and every weekday here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We come to you with the nerdy news you need to know about before jumping in the chat to answer your questions, comments, and concerns. In between those two segments, I reach into here, grab a video game, toss to one of you when you win a video game each and every day. There's a million ways to win. Uh, You can be in the Twitch chat like so many of you are. Or you can subscribe to us, back us on Patreon, and if you do those things, you don't have to be here at all, which would help if you're watching this on youtube.com slash kindoffunny or listening on podcast services around the globe. We end the show by jumping into the chat to answer your questions, comments, and concerns. Do a whole bunch of stuff. Get out. Sanch Bear says... The Shadow won. No, the Shadow didn't win. Maybe I'm, I, mean, I'm, I mean, he probably would have won. Oh, just doing his thing there. My God. So I mean, jeez, man. You know? Yeah, I do know. I do. I mean, because it's one of those things, Kevin. I never thought it would happen. I did. I had let Robert Kirkman lull me into a false sense of security mm-hmm. that he was never going to do this, that he was ending his things. But here we are. Yeah, the big man. He just slaps Kentucky you. Zone. Robert Kirkman coming out and saying, "You know what? I need more money." And you know what I say? Good, get it. I'll give you all my money, Mr. Kirkman. Mm-hmm. You just, you I hope Mr. Otley gets some money off of this. The daddy will. He's co-credited, isn't he? No, I guess there's wrath for him. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I'll give you some money, Ryan Otley. <laughs> here, here's a little bit here, of cash for the movie. Buy him a ticket. <laughs> Jesus fucking all right, Christ! Which one do you want to start with? We'll start with Xbox Scorpio. Okay, happen- is happening. It. Over. At Twitter.com, Digital Foundry says, to clear up the speculation, at Digital Foundry will have an exclusive Xbox Scorpio reveal on Eurogamer this Thursday at 2 p.m. UK slash 6 a.m. Pacific. This, of course, piggybacking off of everything that started happening yesterday over the weekend. Of, yep. uh, there's rumors that Scorpio is getting revealed this week. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so on and so forth. Tim, what's your take? Man, I, this, it's interesting. I think that this is a great move from Microsoft's yeah. part, where it's like, okay, PS4, 
Pro had such a botched reveal, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. the reasoning for that was we all expected we were going to get game announcements and they were going to sell us on this console, and then we ended up just watching streams of a bunch of pretty games that don't look pretty on this side of things sure. when we're not playing it on the same hardware as them and don't have the TVs that they have. Yeah. Then going to Digital Foundry, the site that is undeniably known to be the most reliable when it incredible when it comes to the nerdy ass visual fidelity shit that we don't understand. Yeah. Like the crazy frame rates, the checkered boxing, like all this stuff. I don't know. I have no idea what the hell most of it is. Who the I hell know knows? what looks pretty and what doesn't look Only pretty. Only the four richest kings understand. But they they have the potential now to reveal games. They'll come out and I I doubt we're gonna get many, if any, game announcements with this. I think it's gonna be more, hey, look at what your the Xbox games you know can do on this new system. So okay. I think we'll get a lot of those side-by-side -side things with the real nerdy numbers to be able to be, like, it'll be an actual thing of, you don't need to look and be like, what looks better than, which side looks better? It'll be more like, oh, this is this much better, demonstrably, yeah. like, quantifiably, and, and that'll be it. Do you think, think the Beast, thing, do you think, uh, here's my thing about it. Do you think it's actually going to be, look at this, look at that, or is it going to be, here are the specs for it? Uh, I definitely think that, I mean, we're going to get specs. For sure. Sure, right? obviously. But I, I do think that there's going to be, look at this game running on the Xbox compared to, the Xbox One compared to the This Xbox is a weird whatever. reveal. It but is. here's the, I guess, here's the thing is that the PlayStation 4 Pro <coughs> went the, <laughs> Invincible, it went the traditional route mm -hmm. of like, hey, we're going to do a conference, we're going to do this, yep. and that didn't work. Yep. So then actually limiting your scope here. But it's weird to, be, to me that it is, we're doing this, but... IGN, GameSpot, etc., aren't seeing it ahead of time, and they're I, not. I don't anything. think that's weird. I, I mean, I think that it's like, why would they? They, they, like, they, just like us, are the type of people that shit on those reveals because we don't care about that stuff. But what I'm saying is not that it's weird. There's not a reveal event. I'm saying I understand Digital Foundry is going to be the guys who are like, oh, look at this pixel, look at that thing, but even if it, I guess. I'm saying private behind closed doors. Here's a very polished presentation with two TVs that is doing what you're saying, and I'm presenting it to mm. the biggest outlets. Yeah, and saying, "Hey, this is what's going on." Yeah, it is interesting because, like, what what is this going to be? Because it doesn't sound like it's going to be like a live stream or something like that. Like, yeah. I, I imagine this could be just an article with a bunch of specs, and then there'll be embedded videos that are like. Cause have you seen Digital Foundry's videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, the, I, the graphic comparison stuff. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, like yeah. I think it, it'll be it'll be a bunch of that type of stuff, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's interesting because it, it could be more than that, but I doubt it because you're right. Like if they were going to do a live stream thing, it would be on the, the bigger sites because you just want the audience. But at the very least, they know that all the other sites are going to cover this. Yeah. So yeah. it's like you, yeah. you'd rather control the message with the guys that are going to cover it right <laughs> instead of the people like us that That's are going to be point. like, oh, who the fuck's the PS4 who the Pro for? What the fuck's for? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because like they know and they like it's the people going to them for that information. Like they are the most credible people when it comes to that stuff. So. And I mean, Eurogamer getting some love. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just a different side. Everyone always thinks of the Americas, but sure, Eurogamer sure. kills it over there. Um, I don't know. It's still that question of what is this system? Um, and I, I think that th like this event happening now, pre E3, tells me that it's, it is going to be not the next console. It is going to be more of just an iterative thing. I think it's going to be much more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro is, but I, I don't think it's going to be like, all right, we're moving on. I think it is what they said it was last year. And the next event. step, the and iteration. It's, like, it's still the, like, the, it's like the mobile phone every year. You get a new iPhone. It's like the Xbox brand is going to keep going. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, it'd be like the rumor going around Xbox One X mm -hmm. as the title. Sure. And it's like, I think that says exactly what this is. There'll be the Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X. I'm fascinated to see what happens. Because this is an, a different way to roll this news out, and I think it sets expectations at a different level. Mm -hmm. And then that does become, though, so depending on how much they do tomorrow, of course, what happens then at E3? What happens? Do they do a reveal event, a, a reveal event period for it? Or is it just that this is the news about it, and then there is a hands-on event that IGNs and everybody else gets to go to and do all these different things for? I mean, well, you hope that it's, it's games, games, games at E3, E3 right? yeah, yeah. Like, we just did our, our Gamescast topic that went live today. That's our predictions for Xbox and what they're going to do. And yeah. I, I'm sure we said some things that are now wrong. Because I think we talked about will they reveal it beforehand or not. Right. And I, I think that for me, uh, the, the that would determine whether it is their next console or it is just an iterative thing. So the fact that this is happening, I'm like, I'm totally expecting them to come out and it be more similar to PS4 Pro. And I in the, the Gamescast video, I said that I think it's going to be $400. 
And I know that that's crazy, but I do think that they, they might take that hit just to try to get ahead. Well, I think they have to. If, if this thing isn't Xbox 2, and it is iteration of Xbox One, it can't be, it can't be $500. It can't come out and be that expensive. Yeah, but I mean, with how powerful it is, I, it no, needs no, to be. Don't get so me wrong. That, like, I know they're going to be losing voice. money on it, but that's, I don't know, man. Scorpio yeah. is fascinating. It can't is. can't wait to find out what it is. If it's yeah. going to be something totally knocks our socks off, or if it's just what we kind of thought it was going to be, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Thursday, 6 a.m. Pacific. So our plan for this is that we're just going to treat it like a kind of funny morning story. You'll do the morning show with mm-hmm. Andy Cortez that day, probably, mm-hmm. talk about that thing. I will be, uh, I Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, I'm going to GameSpot. They invited me over to play Mass Effect. We're going to play Mass Effect there. It'll be streamed here natively so when that stream ends this stream will start mm-hmm. i'll be coming home towards the back half of it and i can talk to you a little bit more about it too but to react with it that the reactions piece will be done here what are your predictions for thursday not as much information as everybody wants i think it'll be specs i think there'll be this is what it is i think there'll be some phil spencer quotes in there saying this is you know what it is why we're doing it how it's going to affect everybody i don't think you see the box i don't think you see the price mm. i don't think I don't think they give you a release date. Okay. I think literally it is. There's been a lot of scuttlebutt about what this is. Scorpio to us is, the, you may, maybe you get the name. Maybe it is, it, Scorpio is the Xbox One X or whatever, Xbox One X. Gotcha. This is what we think it's going to look like. This is what's going on. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost with you. I think we see the box. Okay. What the Scorpio uh, looks like. Yes. Yeah. I don't think, we don't get a release date. We do get the generic 2017, um, which we already know. We don't get the price. And a lot of spec talk of the inside stuff. I do think that we'll see some comparison videos of games that are already out on Xbox One. Yeah. Um, and I think they'll, they'll call it the Xbox One X. And I think that they'll announce that. Taylor CF says, Tim and Greg, Red Dead is rumored to be sh- shown running on it. What do you guys think? I mean, that'd be awesome. Definitely not. I mean, the thing is, I do feel like they, in order for this to be a... A hit reveal, they do need to have something new. It yeah, can't yeah. just be old things. I'd roll the dice on it. The fact that, I mean, when the PlayStation 4 Pro was announced, we kept saying, why didn't they just do this as a press release? Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. like that's what this <coughs> seems like it's going to be. Yeah. So, I don't know. I can see them holding Red Dead for, if not E3. It's well, what's interesting thing. about this is something I brought up in the show, the E3 prediction show, one of the Patreon people called it out that I forgot about this because I think everybody did, is that there already is a Red Dead exclusivity deal for online content with PlayStation yeah. where they're getting windowed early. So it'd be really interesting to see if they're, if that's okay then to bring your thing over. Mm. I, guess, I mean, I guess, yeah, especially Rockstar. I'm sure they're litigious yeah. as fuck and want to be everywhere. And, but I, and, but it, and that would make sense too in the way of like Rockstar... Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a million different rock stars, and I guess we're all on Rockstar San Diego's one working on Red Dead, so that doesn't mean. Huh. I'm back and forth on all these information, yeah. all these knowledges. A lot, no. of, a lot of things I want to know on Thursday. Thursday's going to be interesting. I think, I think that people are going to be very surprised about what comes out. What actually like, happens? Like, just even looking at the chat right now, there's no consensus. Everybody sure. thinks it's going to be well, something whatever different. Whatever, I've seen a lot of people when we first started talking when they were talking about teraflops. Yeah. A lot of teraflops. There will be a lot of teraflops. Gotcha. Confirm. Next story! Comes from the one and only NeoGaf. Over there, they've taken all the ukulele reviews and shoved them in one thread. Uh, what did you? What do you think, Tim? You were- I mean, this is this is kind of what I expected. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest, I think it's a little higher than, really? than I expected. Yeah. The Meta- Metacritic right now, last I saw, it was somewhere around 63. Okay. Uh, but but go up, Kev. Let's look at some of the big guys. So Polygon gave it a 5.5. That's mm-hmm. like the on the low end of all these. Gamespot six. with a six. Uh, IGN gave a seven. IGN gave it a seven from our boy Marty Sleva, who's a huge banjo fan. Right. So to me, that is the review that matters. Yeah, yeah. Um, Game Informer an eight. Game Informer gave it an eight, which is very interesting. Um, Guardian four out of five. I'm trying to see the other ones that like. You like think US I'm... Gamer three out of five. Sterling gave it a two out of ten. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, what, what game explain you give it? Like, oh, they liked they it. they liked it. Cool. Yeah. So, I don't know. Sounds, sounds about right. So, now here's where I started at the show when we wanted to put this in there. Was the fact that I didn't realize the embargo was up for ukulele. Mm. You know what I mean? We mm. have review copies. It's just, there's so many of us. And there's this little game called Persona to play. Yeah, and I don't want to play until the Switch one comes out. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the thing is, in the can right now, we have a ukulele Let's Play with me and Nick. Where it's interesting that these reviews hit. Because these reviews are in line with what I say in the Let's Play. Where I'm watching and I'm like, all right, 
I don't really know. It seems like, like Nick likes it fine, but doesn't love it or anything. Yeah. So my question is, should we put the Let's Play up right now? Yeah. Just post the Let's Play. Fuck it. Just put it right out there. Who the it's hell? Not a, we no try one to, controls us. We try to do things at 9 a.m. You know what I mean? Like, that's where you want to go out and do all these different things. No, that's fine. Let's do it. Kevin, Put should it we put up the Let's Play thing? There's no embargoes? Uh-uh. Yeah, the, embar the preview embargo went up a long time ago. We just, you know, get to sit on whatever we want to do. Put it up. All right, fine. Joey Noel, if you're in the chat, you're going to need to put up some tweets about this stuff eventually. We're going to put it up here, though, I guess. Right now. Publish People are confused about what I was saying. I wasn't talking about Persona 5 coming to Switch. I'm talking about Ukulele coming yeah, to Switch. Yeah, you're waiting on Ukulele. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to put it live. Everyone needs to watch it after the show. Nick's played ukulele. Kevin, I never ran through this. Did you cut out the part where Nick says all the, the mean things? I'm just kidding. He doesn't say mean things. What's up, everybody? Welcome <laughs> I'm always worried that it's just not going to start right, you know, because Kevin's done that before where he uploads it and it's just got all the bullshit in the front. Mm -hmm. I love you, Kev. Our ukulele Let's Play is live right now. Go check it out on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. It is 11.30. Yeah, uh, the Invincible thing kind of sucked up a lot oh, of time because we flipped out. We were having good times. Right, cool. All right. Let's move on through the day. Oh, I don't know what that was. Ukulele up right now. Uh, let's jump over to Kotaku, who says, loads. <laughs> Patricia Hernandez, Bioware promises big changes for Mass Effect Andromeda starting Thursday. Mass Effect Andromeda had a couple of rough, rough weeks thanks to high-profile technical issues, animation wonkiness, and general fan disappointment. In response to that feedback, Bioware has announced improvements to Andromeda that will start easing out yeah, the visual kinks, while also teasing some major changes. Uh, here are the full patch notes. Most are notable are lip, lip, uh, improved lip sync and facial acting during conversations, though we don't know what degree the conversations will feel more human. Also, improved tutorial placement, single player balance changes, ammo crates, armor, blah, 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 blah. Multiplayer balance changes, I don't care. Added option to skip autopilot sequences in the galaxy map, thank you. Improved logic, timing, and continuity for relationships and story arcs, okay. Improved lip sync and facial, uh, various uh, collision issues, bugs, Blah, blah, fix this issue where this is going on, blah, blah. This is interesting they put this up because there was a, a letter from Aaron I thought that was a little bit more concise than this one. These tweaks will go live Thursday. Beyond that, Bi BioWare T's major changes coming down the line and, and vaguely. Uh, quote, improvements to make romance options for Scott Ryder. As we reported last month, they've been, they, BioWare was criticized for having disappointing gay romances that did not match the quality of the game's straight romances. And go on, go on, go on. More options. This is all just going on like this. Yeah. But they're fixing Mass Effect. So what, what, what's your read on this? Good. It's it, I you know I thought you know, the most interesting commentary I saw on it was from Andrea Renee, a friend of the show, uh, where I saw it was Aaron's letter went up. I'm gonna try to find that real quick, uh, and it was you know oh okay like you're doing all these different things, you're fixing the game, that's cool, and like I, I you know it is that thing where I was like I saw Patrick Klepek and I think Patrick Klepek tweeted it. I had the same thought process of like oh cool, I'm glad I stopped. I'm glad because I, I do want to get back to Mass Effect like I said, and again I'm playing it Thursday over at Gamespot right before this. Um, I was like, all right, cool. I, I like where that's at. I like that they're doing that. But then Andrea tweeted out and just the fact of like, hey, I'm glad they're doing this, but it kind of sucks that an early adopter like myself who's put like whatever, 80 hours into it, that, you know, here it is. I, it's not, it wasn't what I wanted, right? Yeah. When I wanted it. See, Aaron's letter is, hi, everyone. It's been two weeks since the launch of Mass Effect Andromeda. And we're thankful to the millions of you who have already joined us on this journey. And... Though the game is now in your hands, it's really just the beginning. Since launch, our team has been pouring over your comments, feedback, looking to discover what you like about the game, as well as areas to improve. This Thursday, we'll release new patch bubble button. It goes on yet. Allowing you to skip when traveling between the planets. Better, increasing inventory limits. Improving the appearance of eyes on humans and Asari characters. Decreasing the cost of remnant decryption. Blah, blah, blah. And then it, it's just... I'm glad that they're listening. That's the good thing. It just sucks that... Why did the game have to come out like this? Why, who didn't see this in playtest and think this was going to be a problem, especially on the console versions and all those yeah. different things? So it's good. Uh, I think it's always going to be that, that thing, though, right? Your first impression of the video game is your first impression of the video game. It's rare to see a Final Fantasy Realm Reborn. You know what mm. I mean? It's rare to see a game come back from, well, I came out and everybody hated me or made fun of me and I somehow rebounded into this awesome thing. Yeah. It happens. Don't get Destiny, me wrong. I mean, Destiny, but even then, though, like so many people hate Destiny... Based on how their first it impressions, first came out. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I that's the thing is like after. that does happen, and I and I, I think Andromeda is always going to be the f weird eyes and the crab walk and all these glitches, and no matter what they put in to fix it, that's what so many people are going to think of forever. Mass mm -hmm. Effect Andromeda is always going to be the first Mass Effect that universally missed the mark. Mm. Some people would argue three did too or whatever with its ending and all these different things. Not necessary, you know what yeah. I mean? Like that's that's like totally. Quality, it was I the am the beholder. Of the exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, what this means in terms of 
this legacy, who knows? It does It does make me excited that I stopped because now I get to jump yeah. back in and play more of it and be like, oh, okay. Not that yeah. those were my big things, but in terms of you're up against Horizon and Zelda and Persona and w- one of the most powerful springs of all time, yeah. you can't come out and have all these problems. Exactly. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, it's EA too, so it's like there's no excuses with the, the size of the team that they had sure. and with the playtesting that this should have went through. There's no excuses. However, it's good that they're solving the problems, and it, it's a little too little too late, but at the same time, like this game is going to be played by millions and millions of people from this point on. Sure. So it's better that they fix it than just Ignore leave it Ignore it? Open. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Over at IGN.com, Wesley Copeland says, Sega launches Bayonetta Countdown. A Bayonetta announcement is being teased at Sega. Uh, An official countdown has begun over on the Sega website. At first glance, it's difficult to make out what's being teased, but once you see the image, pictured below, behind the countdown as a whole, the tease becomes clear. At this point, we don't have much to go on. That said, in April Fool's Day, Sega released an 8-bit version of Bayonetta on Steam. And while it's easy to write off April Fool's shenanigans as a joke, it's more than plausible the jests could be a sly hint at a PC port. It's also also worth remembering that last year at uh, E3, Platinum Games' director uh, was asked about a potential third in the series, to which he replied, quote, of course one make a third before asking, why shouldn't it too? Mm, mm. What do you think, Tim? There's a lot, a lot here. So, Bayonet is in a weird place where first one, critical hit. Yeah. Cult classic, didn't sell too well. Yeah. Right? Then, no one ever thought it would get a sequel. Especially, and on then it did exclusively on, on the Wii U. Again, reviewed very well. Mm-hmm. Cult classic. Bayonetta featured in Smash Bros. Weird move, but it. She apparently won the fan thing. I'll never believe that. But whatever, she won the fan voting. You, you think it was f- shenanigans? The electoral shenanigans. college put her. In I'm there. sure she got. I'm sure she got a lot of votes. But I'm sure there was other characters that got more votes. In the you can vote for any character in existence. Bayonetta did not win that. Gotcha. Square. So, that's interesting. Her amiibo, still not out. Her amiibo, confirmed to be coming at some point. I don't think this is going to be that news. Okay. Um, But I would not be surprised if there's some Bayonetta shenanigans afoot here. Shenanigans. I don't know the licensing and all the deals that have went on. We've seen a lot of Wii U ports coming to the Switch. Could this just be Bayonetta 1 and 2 coming to Switch? I don't think so. Uh, That'd be weird. It'd it'd be weird in an interesting way. Yeah, exactly. I would hope that we reach a point where Bayonetta 1 and 2 get, re- or specifically 2, get released on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I think that could be an interesting mm. thing to get the franchise in a place that it can sell more and more people are get playing, people more people care. Three. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it could just be, oh, it's coming to Steam, and that would please a lot of people. But I don't know. I There's so much that could happen with this, but it could end up just being nothing. You know? Mm. I don't think it's a Bayonetta 3. Why is that? You think it's just because... My, my thing would be that I think this is just too quiet for that. Yeah. And also, I still don't know if that's something you do yet. What you're talking about yeah. makes more sense. Let's I stoke think the need, fires. Yep. Let's get Bayonetta into the hands of either Switch players or Xbox and mm-hmm. PlayStation 4 players. Let's get them excited about this, drum up the support that when we release a third one, people will actually give a shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, it's I don't know shit about game development. But what, it really? it seems that... Uh, porting Wii U games isn't that difficult because they keep doing it. Sure. So I'm like, all right, cool. If that's the case, then why not? Like, every good Wii U game deserves a second life because it died on that console. Bayonetta 2 was an awesome game. People deserve to play it, and people are now liking the Switch. Um, I don't know about the exclusive deals and stuff like that. I'm sure Nintendo paid to get Bayonetta on their system, but I don't know. Maybe someone else could pay more. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it'll be fascinating to watch. I know a lot of people do like it, and that's what. But it's also that thing of, it is how many games have we seen recently where oh, here's your Mirror's Edge, and like mm-hmm. these just doesn't sell. You know, what yep. I mean, there is this passionate audience that wants it, but it isn't actually going to come out and make a make the, waves. The difference with Bayonetta, though, lay it on me. What's the difference? Is well, first off, the game already exists. Bayonetta two. Sure, right? sure. So oh, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, and I'm not saying don't pour it. I'm not saying that. Um, but Bayonetta is different than, than the Mirror's Edge of the world because it got good reviews. Because people love it. Okay. Right? Like, Mirror's Edge came out, and sure, it's like hardcore fan base like, really liked it, but critically, it was getting you know, some sixes, some sevens, maybe a couple eights, whatever. Whereas Bayonetta was like pretty consistently nines. Everybody loved, loved it. Or yeah, yeah. just. Who doesn't love some Witch Combat? Know, generic outlet. So, I don't know. Bayonetta is definitely an interesting game, and I feel that the that genre is 
just getting smaller and smaller in terms of the pie chart of video games. Yeah. Where the Dark Souls of the world have kind of taken the reins over from the more actiony Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, okay. God of War yep, yep, style. Yep, 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 yep. Where like I feel like the PS2 generation was defined by action games de- like defined that. Defined by just like you're running around, slice, 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 combo, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas Dark Souls is a bit more slow, methodical, and then the Bloodborne's and all that, and like you can see those games in every game that comes out now. Right, right, right. right. But I, there's definitely still a place for the, the Ninja Guidance and the Bayonetta's Dev, Devil May Cry. So, I don't know. And Bayonetta is, again, hasn't fucked up yet. See, what's interesting, you're like, there is a place for the Bayonetta's and the Devil May Cry's. And I guess Bayonetta's not a good example, but Devil May Cry is a better example of, like, is there? Yeah. Is this similar to a ukulele? Is this similar to a Sly Cooper? Of Like, these were, like, games in, 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 that had a, their period in time. And so when people are like, man, I want that, I want that, I want that, you get it, and people are like, yeah. yeah, I don't think so. I mean, even with Devil May Cry, it's like Devil May Cry never failed. Uh, DMC, the reboot, didn't do too well, did it? It didn't, I mean, it, but it didn't, like, totally Sure, fail. it didn't, like, it, tank it, tank. That's what I'm saying. It's like, okay. we're not ta- I'm not talking about fucking hits. I mean, Nier Automata is a perfect example of a game that it's coming out, and sure, it's not going to do super well sales-wise, but... But I bet, I bet Nier Automata is, like, uh, proje- projections and what it needs to be successful are way lower. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. I feel like that there is a, a place for these games when you are being realistic about what it's going to be, yeah. and I think there's an example of that where, yeah, that's getting... Critically, it's loved. Everyone loves it that plays it. So, I don't know. I hope Bayonetta doesn't die. I, I'll be interested. I don't I'm, want uh, DMC to come back in the right way, too. Sure, you want Dante. Like you, even, you like real Dante. Not Ray Gutierrez. Four was like fun. Yeah. The problem is like with all these franchises, especially Ninja Gaiden, they just kind of just kept going for too long. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like mm-hmm. it was almost too annualized. Whereas it's been long enough now that we haven't seen. Them. I mean, we saw the DMC Definitive Edition, but. We haven't gotten a new one in a while. You'll get one to one day. Nier Automata shipped one million copies. Which is amazing for what I'm sure they projected. And that's the whole thing. It's like, don't, you, this is what we always talk about, right? Uh, a AAA PlayStation exclusive comes out. Uncharted sells a million copies. And everybody like, oh my God. What do we do? Yeah. <laughs> Start laying people off. Nier Automata is a million. Say Magnifique. Say that's another game I got to get to. It's, I see it on my thing. It's Persona 5 right there. It's Mass Effect. And then it's Nier right there. Mm. I'm like, mm. I'm sorry. Mass Effect. It's going to be near next. And when I say next, I mean in 97,000 hours. Not to mention Mario Kart right around the corner. Too many games. Too many games. Speaking, Speaking of too many games. Too many games. Over <laughs> at Kotaku. Gita Jackson. Gita Jackson, you think? Let me, let me try G-I-T-A. You well, it's like Vita, Gita. so Gita Jackson. Gita. A game in which you play as a Twitter egg and romance other eggs via subtweets. Let me read this to you, Greg. All right. I, just, I saw this article Lay today, and I'm like, this is a Tim and Greg ass game. All right? Twitter can be a pretty awful place. The subtweet game makes the worst parts of it into a romance game. The subtweet game was made in a month for the Nano Reno Game Jam, and it perfectly captures the feeling of flirting on Twitter by faving any and everything that sounds like it might be flirtatious. Subtweets are the practice of passive-aggressively tweeting about someone else while not mentioning them by name or username. I'm in very life, familiar with it. That's usually reserved for friendship-ending fights or call-out posts, but in this game, subtweets are all about love. Aww. Some sweet, nasty love. Sweet, nasty. In the subtweet game, you play as a Twitter user, scrolling through your timeline and doling out faves to your preferred tw- tweeter. The other, us- the other users all have distinct personalities. One's incredibly horny. Nick. One is cranky. Call it. <laughs> and I was complaining. One of them is a bot, and they react to your Kevin. faves and interact with each other. Kevin is the bot. The game is short, and the gameplay isn't too tricky to figure out. Just like in life, you have to fade the object of your affection as much as you can. But what's neat about this game is to see Twitter as a platform distilled into a game. One user, Sunder Egg, will grouse about how they changed the fave icon. While Lost in the Shell fishes for compliments by saying they wish they were as talented as some other people on Aww. here. The flirt bot breaks and thirsty as fuck starts tweeting. Jesus! <laughs> Peach and eggplant emojis at it. That's All good. that's missing is someone sliding into your DMs. Don't worry, we'll be there. The most fantastical element of the game is that it makes subtweeting seem fun. The moment you realize that the Twitter user you have been romancing is subtweeting you, the player, it feels warm and fuzzy, entirely unlike when people subtweet you in real life. Anyway, sounds cool. It reminds me of Emily is Away. I'm sure it's 100%. not nearly as good as that, but... Sure, I want to try it though, this. right? Yeah. You want to do it? You want to try it? Yeah, we should. We, we should, should do play a Let's it? Play of this. Let's play it. It's playable on your browser. The subtweet game. Okay. All right. We should do a Let's Play. Uh, want to read some tips? Sure. Uh, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, we read tips here. We I still do. can't get over that there's a fucking Invincible movie. There I'm is. sorry. I'm still so rocked to my core right now. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, Kevin. Did Nick come? I think he did. Yeah. No? I don't know. Probably not. 
It's, it's happening on the internet, so no, he probably doesn't know. No, he has no idea. Fan. Is he? Yeah. Or is he a big faker? No, he, he reads the comments all the time. I'm going to read some tips. Thank you for your love and support. We're starting right now with Trevor JX. Love, Dr. Nick. Can I get a juicy butthole for my incredible girlfriend, Megan? Also, here's a fun clip to hopefully give back. He sent this at 7.40 a.m. I'm not sure if he understood. He probably didn't know who was going to be on the show. I'll give you a butthole. Give me the one. No. Nope. damn it, Kevin. <laughs> butthole. Good job. Kill thy comp. Happy Persona 5 day. Greg, what is your favorite part of the game so far? Tim, are you playing it? Really enjoy you guys. Kevin, nice job doing what you do. Always gives me a laugh. What is my favorite part of Persona 5 so far? Fuck, that's a great question. I Here's the thing about it, I think. What I love about it is, and this is a weird answer, but is the cop out of it, it's all new. Stayed away the best I could from trailers. Didn't look at the Japanese stuff. So going into a, like the first dungeon, I was like, this is fucking awesome. And now being p beyond that and moving in towards the second dungeon, it's like, awesome. I can't wait. And like meeting these new people and we, cleaning up my room and expanding the thing and seeing what the jobs are. It's like after being so into Persona 4 for so long, like, you know, it became, it, it, we knew what it was. We knew it was going to be around the next corner. We knew all that stuff. Have a new cast of characters discover it. This story, again, I think is on another level in terms of like, Oh shit, like, Persona's always been dark, obviously, and there's been fucking murderers in the last game, coffins in the third game. But this one is, like, dealing with even, I think, more mature themes, and still the Persona-y way, but it is like, man, this guy's a fucking scumbag. Yeah, I'm gonna take this asshole down, and then getting choices, and it's, it's great. Um, BH Gamer gave a tip and said, was watching the podcast with Nick's boy, Stuart, and I Stuart. learned that Tim and I use the same porn site. Got oddly excited. Also, Tim, got a new haircut and need hair gel recommendation. Love you, booze. American Crew. That shit's good. Okay. That shit's good. Uh, Damien Sori gave a tip and said, I wanted to give a special shout out to a kind of funny best friend, Tardis Blue. He showed me around Nashville and let me crash with him for my spring break. Wow. Without this community, it wouldn't be possible. Shout out to you, Tardis Blue. Tardis Blue, an, o an OG best OG. friend. OG. He's been around, or she's been around a long time. I assume it's a he. I think he said he in there somewhere. Yeah, he. Okay, great. I am the cannibal. Greg, it's happening in all caps. I'm sorry about spamming the chat. I run the Invincible podcast, and this is incredible. It's finally happening. Again, you're welcome on the show anytime. Love you guys. Love you. We got to make that happen. That's I know awesome. we've tried. I'm bad at getting on podcasts because life is very complicated. S. Clements 12 says, Wish I could come to Kind of Funny Live, but I have an air show to host that week at Scott Air Force Base. Oh, uh, that's fucking awesome. A fucking air show? What are you the like the PA guy? Like now nah, coming over, it's the Blue Angels. Everybody Blue waved Angels. to Randy. He's been a Blue Angel for 34 years. Oh, Randy's passed out. The plane is on autopilot. A Jack Randy! <laughs> then oh, it turns God. into a transformer. <laughs> uh, Greg, if you're interested in a flight in a USAF Thunderbird, let me know. Sean Clements. Nope. Oh, okay, I'm down. I am I'm not. In. I want to fly in a Thunderbird. This, I thought about making this my topic on Game Over Greggy today. Mm. I'll, so I'll bounce it off you. We're workshopping here. Okay. It's just the things you always thought you'd be down in for, and then when you get that opportunity, you're not down for. Because, like, skydiving is my example, right? Because I was always like, yeah, I'd go skydiving, no big deal. And then we finished it up at noon one day, and somebody had just gotten hired at IGN, and he, and he came in, and he was like, hey, yeah, and, like, I'm trying to set this thing up to go film a video where we take you and Naomi skydiving. And I just went, nope. And he's like, what? And I'm like, oh, I don't want to skydive. <laughs> Turns out I don't want to. I always thought in a hypothetical sense, yeah, I'd love to go skydiving. But when in real life, a person presented it to me of like, we can make a video, it'll be totally free. And I was like, nope, fuck off. Nope, I'm not going to do that. I was like, huh, that's interesting. I'll and that, do it. That was the same thing with them. Um, uh, Recently for us when we were about to fly a plane. Yeah, the Extreme Gamer Challenge, Challenge thing. Challenge on IGN, yeah. You're, you're doing one with the dune buggies. We it's did not dune live buggies. Yet. It's not live yeah. yet, right? No, no, no. And then they had asked me if I wanted to go and do the one that they put up right now with the guy in the the uh, the the MiG or whatever, like the fighter jet. And I was going back and forth, and I was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Am I going into a real fighter jet? And they were like, yes. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Sorry. I, 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 I get motion sick on fucking cars in the back seat, let yeah, alone it's good in content, this thing. good content, Greg. I'm sure it's it would be for content. IGN. Okay. All right? Me and Nick rode them dune buddies. I know, I know. That seemed like fun. a fun one. It was I was fun. trying to do the other one that I don't think they announced yet, but whatever. Aeon358. Just subscribe for the first time. Thank you. All of you at Kind of Funny for the laughs and good times. P.S. Stay away from smokes, Gregs. I will. I'll only smoke when I have to save Sean Finnegan from getting his ass beat. Mm -hmm. Which apparently is all the time. All the damn time. Cal gave a tip and said, sending love from the UK. Love the show. Love the somewhat. 
Love the somewheres, a kind of funny-ish clip I came across. P.S. Turn on subs. It was bad? Yeah. We have not had a good fun clip, says Kevin. Dudes in space, tip Dudes note in space. 16. Reason to hire Dudes in space, three. I think I've taken care of my first day's pay and tips. That's pretty cheap. He's tipping $5 a day, 16 times. Actually, that's, I guess it's that kind of expensive. Yeah, that does add it pretty quick, yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Dudes in space. You, you, really, all you did is you paid Andy Cortez's first day. Uh... KJ, or maybe it's KJU1, or KG1. Hey, guys, long time, first time. Any chance y'all will sell a kind of funny morning show coffee mug? Thanks. Yeah, there's definitely a chance. Never say never. That's a good one. Yeah. If Tim would stop not well, making make merch happen, because Tim not makes merch happen a lot. There's a shit ton of new merch coming. This, on the 7th, there's a new shirt coming out. There's a sale so, right now. There's, there's a, a sale, sale right now, but it's not new merch. There's no more. All right, There's cool. new stuff coming. Follow, oh, final tip for right now comes from Hollow Drone. You always ask whether Scorpio is all new or an upgrade, but what would make you think what would make it a new console? I think they're moving to an iterative model. 360 backwards compat is groundwork for it, going beyond gens. I mean, what you're saying is what it's probably going to be, but what we're saying is what we think it should be based on Xbox failing right now and not being really that's my whole thing is I the argument I make all the time is the fact that Xbox lost this generation and it did well I'm not trying to start a war here don't get me wrong but lost this generation so I don't think you can come out and be like hey we've made the Xbox one slightly better don't and you all loved your Xbox one so jump on and and not only we made it slightly better and more expensive we want to pick it up now and play the exclusives that we don't have and everybody's gonna be like no like what are you talking about like new consoles get people excited it's a reset button right look at the switch we garbage everyone knew knows it Fucking terrible. Everyone knows it. Awful. Best games this gen. Lots of good games. Stranded. On a fucking Fisher Price toy. But now they bring them all to the Switch. No, they're moving. They're making the journey. Moving! All right, next story. This is all nerd stuff for Tim. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. We can skip these, actually. All right. These next two. I'll talk about them tomorrow. Just Mac stuff. Just Mac stuff doing Mac stuff. So then the next story. This one's interesting. Comes from Fandango. It is. From Eric Davis. Arnold Schwarzenegger tells us he's not done making Terminator movies. Dun, 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 dun. I got the quote here. Dun, 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 dun. What's wrong? I never opened it up. Don't worry, it's just keep, okay. it, just keep I, reading. I can read it. This is a quote from Arnold. I'm looking forward to doing oh, another Jesus Terminator God. movie. Yes. Yeah, he's fucking nailing it. I don't want to call it like fake news like the president calls it, but I think people just write things. I have no idea why. Just because Paramount doesn't want to pick up the Terminator franchise, you have 15 other studios willing to do it. That doesn't mean the Terminator franchise is finished, right? It just means they are their way to negotiate with another studio. But I can't give you the details of that. They'll announce that, yes. <laughs> Wait, why, where did the accent the go in that last word? The Terminator franchise is never <laughs> finished. I remember that after 2018, James Cameron's been getting it back. And then we'll continue on. Boom. It's like, shut up, Arnold. Oh. Why, why do you got to say shut that up? That happening. Oh. It could. No. No? No. All right, fine. Speaking of James Cameron. You're skipping the- Avatar 2 mm-hmm. to begin shooting this fall, says Sig- Sigourney Re- Weaver. Oh, good. And it's but like, she's dead in it. Oh, no. It's Wait, is so she? Anyways. Yeah, she died at the end. I remember it so little of Avatar because it, it was such a forgettable movie that should- I was so excited. When Avatar went down and then- when, and I mean, in public opinion, I know it made money. And then when Terminator fucking Salvation went down, and they were like, ugh. I was like, good. Bury these three things you were trying to make trilogies. Nobody wants them. And here we are. Fuck, how long has it been, by the way? They're making like 10 years or something. Jesus Christ, right? just yeah, stop. 2009. Fuck, stop. Yeah, nearly 10 years. Just crazy. They're making five, That though, shit correct. So. That shit. And correct. then, do you want to do the Defenders? Yeah, sure. Defenders has a release date over at io9. They put out a little uh, thing of them in the uh, elevator. You see that clip? Mm-hmm. Uh, James Whitbrook says, Netflix's Defenders assemble on August 18th. Update. A new viral teaser for Marvel and Netflix. Netflix big crossover just confirmed that we've got another four months until Matt Murdock, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Danny Rand from the super successful Iron Fist start teaming up because the Defenders is coming August 18th. And then it's just a teaser video. It's just them in an elevator. It's not worth watching. I can't believe we got really here. It. You know? It happened. Really? I remember when they when they first announced all these Netflix shows, and I was like, "Really?" I was like, "All right, cool, Daredevil." And then after that, I'm like, "Are we really gonna get all these other ones? Are we ever gonna get the Defenders?" And here it goes, August 18th. They're all. Together. I believed in them once they got when they made the Avengers happen, because when the Avengers happened, I was like, "Oh shit, you really are committed. You you guys know what you're doing." But that was also it's Marvel seems like they can do no wrong in a lot of ways. Yeah. So good for them. Iron Fist. I don't know, like. Well, even I'm that, so it's like whatever. It wasn't great. Big deal. Have you seen Iron Fist? 
I haven't. I just heard no one likes it. I, I, I didn't even like Daredevil. What? Like, I, started, I gave up on them. I just, I don't know. Something about it is, nah. Daredevil, I never, I, I loved <laughs> Daredevil season one. And then wa- tried to watch episode one of Daredevil season two. It didn't work for some reason. I bailed and I never went back. And I mm-hmm. thought that was weird. Love Jessica Jones. Love Luke uh, Cage. Gia loves Jessica Jones. What do you like about her? I didn't watch the show. I don't know. Oh, okay. But like, it's just random because she had, I don't think she's ever seen an MCU movie. Sure. Ever? That's not true. She saw Ant-Man with us. But that was it. So. I mean, yes. I think Jessica Jones is one of the best ones because she has like a, a, a villain that's awesome. Mm. Like her villain was like really great, you know, because that was the thing with like Luke Cage. Like Luke Cage, all right, cool. Oh, we're going. That guy's. Oh, he's dead, so he's not the villain anymore. And then we get to this weird fucking force superhero fight at the end. You're like, that's that well, was really fucking weird. But I liked everything else. Great. And same thing with Daredevil to an extent, right? Kingpin completely fucking awesome. And then the final, they go fight in an alley. And you're like, this totally isn't on. Uh, this doesn't make any sense oh. compared to how this has been. Like, he, come on now, son. Come on now. Come on back now, Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kind of Funny Morning Show each and every week to hear on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We come to you with the nerdy news you need to know about before jumping in the chat to answer your questions, comments, and concerns. In between those two segments, I reach on the computer, grab a brand new video game, and toss it to one of you. How do you win the video game? It's simple. Be in the chat like you are right now. You're automatically entered. That's it. But if you want to amplify your, get three more chances. I almost, I fuck it up there every time because I don't think that's part of the, the rigmarole. You want to amplify your chances. There's three other ways to win, and they are also beneficial if you're one of the people watching on youtube.com slash kind of funny. Because, of course, we put this live every day. And if you're one of the people who are listening to the audio version on one of the podcast services of your choice, you can get three additional chances to win by being a Twitch sub. Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, and if you don't use it, you lose it. Each and every month, you can give away one free sub. We'd love to have it, but even if you don't give it to us, give it to somebody else. Kitty Plays, Alfredo. Not Xavier Woods. He's, no. Nope. Um, but if you subscribe to us, you of course get automatically entered to win every prize we ever give away on Twitch, even if you're not here. You get the kind of funny logo next to your name. You get the emotes. You get the private chat time with us. You get to play multiplayer games like I am doing April 28th when I fucking beat the shit out of Zyger and take $50 from Sean and Pitts. Did you hear about this? No. I I was talking mad shit as I do about how I can't wait for Mario Kart Switch Mm -hmm. stream, of course, April 28th, my birthday stream. We're going to go crazy. I was, uh, Zyger said something. I said I'd, I'd pick, I'd beat his ass. Sean said he had 60, 50 bucks on Zyger. And I was like, I'll take that. I will take, yeah, I'm like, the, I, I will, I, it's me versus Zyger. Yeah. I picked the cup. Okay. I, and like that, and it's just one Grand Prix. And, and, it, and I was like, all right, cool. And then Sean immediately took me off the tweet and tweeted Zyger. He's like, it's very expensive to live in San Francisco. You have to beat him. <laughs> and he ain't going to beat me, son. That's awesome. And then I'm going to, then it'll be the big thing though, of what do I do with Sean Pitt's 50 bucks? Because I feel like I should order stuff on the morning show the next day, on oh, the okay. Monday after. I like that. Where I'm like, all right, cool. Here, I'm going to buy all this different stuff. Okay. Stuff. But I'll be playing other people, and I'll be playing all day. So if you get your Switch Mario Kart, we'll be playing. Um, the other ways to win, of course, support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Give, it to, uh, give us two bucks or more. You're automatically entered to win everything. You don't need to be here. Plus, you get early act. No, you win it. You get the uh, bonus episode we put up every month on those shows. Mm. Today... I'm trying to think if this is an okay game to give away. I, it's, I think it is. I didn't put any notes on there okay. yet, but it's because okay. I usually pick it, so I think I would have done Got it. Well, it. Let me see what the embargo is in this video game here. Uh huh. This might be fresh off the press. Mm, yeah, you know what? These guys are cool with everything we do in our lives. So I'm assuming <laughs> they'd be fine with this. The official, this is an unreleased game we're going to give away today, guys. On April 6th, a little game called Graceful Explosion Machine comes to the Nintendo Switch. I played it at a preview event, loved it. Played it last night in bed while I was watching Good Girls Revolt. Still love it. Okay. I'm down with this game. Pixel junk shootery kind of thing. Go through blast stuff. You mm. have a bunch of different kind of weapons. That, you know, take out the enemies that way. Very cute. K- Kevin's bringing up a thing here. While this goes, this is what we're going to give away today. I'm going to put it all in the random number generator. But first, I'm going to tell you this is brought to you by Black Tux. The Black Tux. Looking Great. For a wedding or special event has never been easier with TheBlackTux.com. With high-quality rental suits and tuxedos delivered to your doorstep, The Black Tux is giving guys a new way to rent. And get this, The Black Tux offers free home try-on, so when you see the fit and feel the quality of your suit months before your event, you are in good hands, brother. Mm-hmm. The best part, it's all done completely online with no trips to the tux shop required. TheBlackTux.com lets you create your look and choose from tons of stylish selected outfits starting at just $95. After ordering, your suit will arrive 14 days before your event. That's a full two weeks to try it on and make sure everything fits. If anything is less than perfect, The Black Tux will send you a free replacement right away. Get $20 off your purchase 
Visit theblacktux.com slash funny. That's theblacktux.com slash funny for $20 off your purchase. So, graceful explosion machine for the Nintendo Switch. Not even out yet. It is going to. Kind of Funny Games Patreon user, Jack Leonard. Jack Leonard. Went bow, on, bow, 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 bow. You can look for an email from me right now. Go have some fun with this game that I like a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see if there's any more tips. There are one, one more tip. We're calling tips. Schroffenstein. Just wondering if all the best friends could check out my podcast, Non-Canonical. It's a storytelling podcast I put a lot of work into. SoundCloud.com slash Christopher Schroff. Okay. S-H-R-O-F. Okay. I'll, sh- I'll put it in the, tw- the, the, uh, the old, uh, what you call it? Chat. That's the one. Put it in that chat. Boop, 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 boop. Go check it out and have some fun with your friend. So many friends. All right, that's good. That's good. I guess we jump in the chat now, right? I think we nailed it, right? We did. We got the tips done. We got the we giveaway got done. We did, every, we we did the all the things. Now it's the old I talked about the Amazon three. Prime. I talked about all the supports and stuff. All right, we're in a good place here. Let's oh, see. shit. Hold on. We, we, I'm going to give you five subs real quick because we're starting to lose them already. Uh, Ninja Turtle Games. Calling Dr. Name. Raja Gold. Raja Gold. Dimitri N-E-Y. Uh, G. Shishibrish. L. Warkshall, thanks for the great content. All right, hopefully from there we won't lose anybody. Go. Give me some stuff from the comments, Tim. Uh, cue up your questions, comments, and concerns. Right now there's not much. Mr. Yasman300 says, Greg, Hi. can Chad do bongos on Kevin? Ooh. God damn it, Kevin. Look at his little fucking arms. Look at his little but hands. But think of it this way. What if at, at Kind of Funny Live, you get wheeled at? Place is pitch black. I come out in a in a black bodysuit, two chads on each hand. Oh lord! And just da 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 da. Hey, do I go to the penis a little bit? Yeah, I do. I don't, I don't like the wielded out part. You don't want to be wheeled out. Can we just pull out of a table and I'll just come in and lay down there, look at my mom? You could. My future mother-in-law. Well, I mean, that's on you for bringing these people that you want to look. Should I tell them not to come? They came to the last show last time, and their daughter got engaged. I can't yeah, be like, this, oh, hey, now time, they're going to come to this show and that daughter's getting get... pregnant. <laughs> oh, shit. Live sex on stage? We doing it? We doing it? I'm down. You know With I'm each down. other? <laughs> well, so here's the thing. Like, this might be a dumb question, Greg. Oh, okay. Man. I can feel it already. Can you have sex on stage? No. Why? Lude act. But. But if it's art? But that's the thing. If like we're selling tickets to this event, do we control the event? No, there's still rules and laws. It's the same thing. Think about like fire code. Why I got yelled at when Let's Play Live when security came to me in the middle of a bit and took away the megaphone I was using because that's like a, a sa- that's a law. Yeah, but you I, can't run around. I, there's a but, law. But about the that. law. Maybe. Okay. Think I about it like this way. Uh, we and, need a. Li- I'm sure there's a license we can get. Right. Well, yeah. So, what, so the loot. No. So you can't be naked anywhere. You can't have sex anywhere? You can be naked. That's fine. Right? Well, they do that penis show. Yeah, yeah right. puppetry of the penis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Like, let's be honest. This isn't going to happen, so why are we thinking this deeply at it? You know? Well, because now it's just one of those hypotheticals. Mm-hmm. How do you have sex in front of people on a stage? I don't, I don't think anyone does do that, though. The shows where you can... There's sex shows in a, in a, in a, in a Tijuana. Well, that's why you go to Tijuana, though. Yeah. Peanut 423 says strippers can barely get nude. That's, that's not true. true. That is true. If a, if a stripper can't get nude, they're not a good stripper. Well, no, it's because like some there's so many ra- rules about they, they can't be bottomless in certain yeah, places. If, and if, it, if, you serve, places, not, if you serve beer or, yeah. I mean, alcohol in general or something like that, it's, the rules really change state to state. I'm never clear. All right, cool. Because back in Missouri, there were no laws when I was there, let me tell you. Strippers, Se- they were really taking off everything. Yeah. People are saying if we move the show to Tijuana, we'll be okay. Okay, that's definitely a plan. Maybe, maybe next. Kind year. of funny life four. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um... Yeah, and everyone's all hopped up and live sex. Well, now. no, here's one. I mean, Rock and Adrift says Greg's second choice for invisible. He means invincible lead actor after Jack Efron. Here's the problem you get into with this: mm. is that you need it to be a younger person, and that's where I start losing my credibility. Mm. I don't know. I due to Megan's law, I don't know many young boys anymore. Got and it. So no, that's. Uh, I mean, like that was the thing when like Tom Holland got cast as Spider Man. I was like, Who the fuck's this? Who, guy? The, who is this guy? Then and then he's like, him. Awesome. I'm like, Oh fuck. Well, 
Turns out they're still pumping out great actors. Yeah, I don't know. Because who's young, who's, I mean, I need to look to you, chat. Who is a young, fucking yacked goddamn kid you can put in there? But he doesn't start out yacked, right? He just starts out like No, he's like yacked, yeah. He's no, there. he's like a normal kid. In issue one? I mean, like, he's got abs. I don't think so. I'm sure he, the abs progress more as they drew stuff. He gets bigger and bigger. Dave Franco they're putting out there. If, if Dave Franco can't count. I love Dave Franco. Dave Franco. Uh, my problem with Dave Franco is if you're getting Dave Franco, let's just get Zac Efron. Why are we fucking splitting hairs? Yeah, that's true. Grant Gustin is not a good choice. He's the Flash and he's too old. I love Grant Gustin. Toby Maguire, I'll think about. Toby Maguire? Toby Maguire is 68 now. He's 68. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Penguin Von Penguin says, there's a strip club south of Houston near Galveston that has fully nude girls because it incorporated as its own city. So that's all we need to do. Oh, kind of like becomes its own city. city. And then... No, we can we make gotta, our own rules. We gotta find a plot of land and then call that a city that's not already in a city. I don't know, man. I just don't know. Is is Mark Grayson Latin? No. No. Why? I, I For some reason, I always had the read that he was. Hmm. You think his mom's Latin? His mom and dad both kind of look like... Well, his dad's an alien. From space. True. Okay, okay. Non-race. But his dad thing. always reminded me of your dad in a lot of ways. Because of the mustache. Probably the mustache. It was <laughs> your dad had an just, awesome mustache? It was just awesome, the mustache. Just, <laughs> awesome mustache. You're right. <laughs> well, my dad also had that very square head shape, you know? Like, yeah. 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 Your dad is... is Omni-Man? Omni-Man. <laughs> but way more tan. Way more tan. You know what I hate about Twitter? Mm. How hard it is for it to autofill who the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I'm just, I'm spelling out Zach Efron, motherfucker. I, I, he has a Twitter. I follow it. Why is it not popping up? Captain Hogwash says Chandler Riggs. We're not just talking about young boys. No, but no. That, oh, no. Well, I, the problem is that he's already too well-known. You know what I mean? We can't bring in somebody that well-known. But yeah. that, is, that, that isn't a bad pick. Well, they do. That's just because they have that crossover. They already know. They sure. work together. Yeah. They're all part of the Skybound family. He's getting older. Uh, And I'm getting older too. Well, I have been afraid of changing because I build my life. Schnick3 says there are conventions that exist that are just for sex and fetishes where anything goes as long as it's behind closed doors. The behind closed doors thing? We'll just close the doors, Kevin. Yeah, I know, but don't you want to record Nailed everything? Nailed and, it. And like, Here's the thing. We say it, and we don't joke around about it. We're all best friends. You're telling me we bring everybody in, we shut all the doors, and we're like, all right, guys, real quick. Don't tweet about this. Don't videotape this. We're going to have some people fuck on stage for you. And everybody would go you? crazy. Crazy. Everyone at our and all then, ages event. And then it would just be like they would do it, and then we'd be like, all right, everyone go back. Like, there's just this weird cut in the kind of funny live three video where <laughs> rather than like edit it out, we just leave the 15 minutes of blank blast <laughs> space, and they come back and people are rolling up tarps and pushing things away. <laughs> like, what happened? And you'll never know. It's like fucking arrival, or not, or not arrival. Um, uh, Jodie Foster, the alien movie with Jodie Foster. No, Jody, contact. contact, right, where she fell and like, oh, you're only, going, you know, you, you didn't go anywhere, but there's all that dead space on the tip. <laughs> Luger8125 says, Tim and Greg, any plans to play Lego City Undercover on the Switch? Nah, man, that, that's a game that's like, don't port that. That, that. that was one of the like. But it was, I, okay. So it was here, a good game okay. for a Wii U launch-ish window title. Like, nah, we don't need that. Four years later. Yeah, that, I mean, my thing was, is I always heard, as a Lego fan, I always heard, oh, it was really good. It was them making this original thing, da da da. And I was like, all right, cool. Not enough for me to go play it on Wii. And then, like, today it arrived from WB, and I was just like, when am I ever going to play this? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? When am I ever going to get down with this? Yeah. I, got, I, I, got, I already it. got other Lego games I'm backed Man. up on, I need to play. Let me tell you, Greg Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment. Yeah. Fuck, it's a good game. I re- I'm starting to replay it because I like it so much. It's good. Snake Pass, also fucking dope. Yeah. It's so dope. So frustrating. It is frustrating, though. So frustrating. Uh, T. Job, one, two, three, says, Greg, what yep. are you going to talk about Persona 5 at length? 
Uh, well, tomorrow, uh, the one and only Dark Knight of News, Andrew Goldfarb, is coming in for the Kind of Any Games cast with us, and we will talk about it there. I'm still early in the game, but I, and I, not that he would spoil it, like, obviously, but we're going to talk about it there, about what I think of the systems early on, what he thinks is somebody who... I, I'm more than... I'm fascinated because, like, it's very... First off, it's really fun that roles have switched. You know what I mean? When uh, I was reviewing Golden at IGN, of course, that's when Goldfarb really got on the Persona train, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. But I had, you know, beaten it and done all the stuff and talked to him about it as he continued to play it and platinum it. And now he's platinum it in Japanese and in English. So I want to talk about what, why he's fucking insane. I want to talk about all the merch he's got. I want to talk about what characters he loves and stuff like that. Um, but tomorrow. And then it'll be... It's going to be similar, I think, to Zelda... In a way, Mass Effect, because I will get back to Mass Effect, of us talking about it at length later as we go on and on. It strikes me as that if I can time it out doing the Persona, if I can get to a dungeon or a palace, get to a palace and then do the uh, exclusive for mm -hmm. Kind of Funny Games, that could be a play ca another playcast where we play through it and we're not talking about this, but I'm talking to you about why you don't like this kind of game and why I do like this yep. kind of game and stuff like that. That'll be fun. Captain Pugwasher says, it's definitely illegal. At E3, Sony fucked Microsoft on stage. Oh! Oh! And uh, Ryan Santilli says, Tim, have you started to think about your entrance to Kind of Funny Live 3 yet? <laughs> I started thinking about my entrance to Kind of Funny Live 3 as I was crowd surfing in, in my entrance for Kind of Funny Live That's 2. Funny. You know? No, I, I have that shit planned, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> that is like the one thing that I have like fully formulated in my head right now for the show. And it's gonna be fucking sick. I have kicked us in. Oh, my phone is dead. Or my computer is dead. Are we in sub-only chat? Is that what you're I saying? I kicked it into sub-only. You're just at the controls now. You also have to bring up Muxy for tip or er, subs. Okay. got a power cord for you right there. Oh, can I have that power cord? Yeah, sure. Good old Sean Twisters in the chat hey! says, Tim, you pumped for Logic's new album. I am. I feel like it's been... I've never been a Logic fan when he had an album come out. Ah. So this is an exciting time for me. Uh, he dropped the Bobby Tarantino the mixtape last year, and that, that was good. It was cool, but I've always been an album guy more than like a mixtape guy. So, Sean Twisters, are you excited good. to come in here the first week of May and give me fifty dollars after I kick the shit out of Zyger on the Mario Kart stream April twentieth? And Zyger, if you want to just throw it and never even race, that'd be a fun bit too. You know what I mean? He just parks the car and he's like, "I hate Sean." Sir Citadel says Tim's gonna gaga his way in from the roof. Man, I wish. There's so much shit that you're like, that would be cool if we could do that, and then they're like, that's not up to code. Like fucking on stage. What the hell, It guys? would be awesome to fuck on stage, but we can't do that either, apparently. Would it though? Like, would it actually be awesome to fuck on stage? Luker 8125 says, Tim, you're the biggest you freak about it. The Mulan McNugget sauce offered exclusively in 1998. Oh I do God. not. This is a thing that keeps coming up now. The McNuggets? Though? Yeah, this came up yesterday. Somebody was asking Nick for impressions of it. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's really I think random. Rick and Morty did something yeah. about it, and oh. like it's a thing now. I mean, Mulan's amazing, though. Is Let's it? Be real. I never saw Mulan. it. You've never seen Mulan? Nah. We should do a watch, -along, watch along on Mulan at some point. Okay. To, so Nick can fucking learn that it has some of the best songs of all time. I'm spamming Disney the chat right now. I put out the video, the old, old Greg way, about casting the Invincible movie. I could use some retweets on that. I did not rewatch it, so I hope no one in it has died. But I also said this is years ago, so yeah, I should be all right. I assume. Now I'm being afraid of changing. You're looking for questions, though. I am. I'm gonna I pick. Am. I'm gonna you pick. At, I'm gonna pick at the Morty. subs then. If I say your name, you're a sub. If you say a little message, you're a resub, and we love and appreciate you. Uh, K Black Twenty Five put Vader in the WWE Hall of Fame. Mike Turlick Persona. 1CC1, Emo Johnny 79, Duds 3800, Kill Thy Comp, thank you Amazon Prime, Mr. Penguin Von Penguin, looking forward to playing Mario Kart with Greg since our birthdays are so close together. Also, welcome Andy. Yo, Andy! <laughs> he just like woke up at his yeah. desk. He's just late. <laughs> Mr. Penguin Von Penguin says welcome. Thanks, Mr. Penguin Von Penguin. Why me? Four seven nine seven. Johnny game lately. Uh, X X one C T H one X X. Loving the content, guys. Keep up the good work. Hashtag bow wow. Bow wow. Luna T. Wow. Much love from Ontario, Canada. Keep up the great content, guys. Love you all. X O X O. Is Vancouver in Ontario? Nobody knows. I don't think so. I'm going to Vancouver Saturday. Nick will be there. Come party with us. Do you? This happened on Twitter last night. So heel kick. Yeah. Movie I produced and I am in. Uh huh. Watching the, with the Van one of the Vancouver premieres with Nick. Yeah. Saturday noon. Mm -hmm. You can buy tickets at heelkick.com. Come hang out with me, Vancouver. It's at the Rio Theater. The night before, at the Rio Theater, Vanessa 
fucking Carlton. What? You better believe it. I hit up I hit, I hit up Jen. I was like, we gotta go to this thing. She's already asleep. And then she woke up in the middle of the night. She looked at it and she's like, who is this woman? I'm like, she's saying a thousand miles. And she, she responds back. She looks like the, uh, uh, fuck, what she described her as that, though. She looks like the, uh, Doodle girl. I'm like, that's her. That's the exact. That's, that's, that's a thousand miles. Girl. Yeah. In British Columbia. I'm gonna fucking go. Oh, that's not at all close to me. Can yeah. you, when you go talk to her? I'm gonna talk to her probably. Can you please find a way to talk to her? I mean, I'm tweeting at like, her. She sees that I'm verified and talk to her. And have her come here. And I, all I want is her to play piano. Well, here's the thing. Now, here's. We'll play, and Kevin will push her around. Time out! That's awesome. Everyone stop. Time out hardcore. I love Vanessa Carlton. Full stop, period. Mm hmm. I do, in fact, love Michelle Branch more. Full and stop, I love period. Stacey Orico more. Shout out to Stacey Orico. There's got to be more to life. She's underrated. No one <laughs> ever remembers Stacey Orico. Okay. I remember Stacey Orico. My question is, if I'm making a play for Vanessa Carlton, which I will. Mm -hmm. I love Vanessa Carlton. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you don't want me to make a play for, for Michelle Branch? Both I of them are working on new albums this year. Positive. <laughs> you, want, you want Vanessa Carlton? Yes. Okay. Vanessa Carlton is an icon. Now, you better choose your next statement after this question All very I'm carefully. Saying, Are you telling me that Michelle Branch is not an icon? Vanessa Carlton <laughs> is to pianos what Michelle Branch is to... Guitars? No. Carlos Santana? I wonder if we can get Santana. No. He's from San Francisco. No, let's just be realistic. Everywhere. His kid went to high school. That's the thing. Is like, do you, are you telling me that... Do you think Vanessa Carlton's Thousand Miles is a... Is a more, I'm, I'm gonna open the chat too. Yes. I want, you the answer is yes. Then everyone. Because you yes. are everywhere classic. It's a classic. to me. A Thousand Miles, it, it, White Chicks kind of pushed it. Yeah, White Chicks you know? did make that like it, a that thing. That thing is like a freaking, like if they did a I love the 80s and 90s about time that out. time period. Doom Patrol in the chat, 78 says they both suck, deal with it. Someone please time, Ahmad, please time out Doom Patrol for 60 seconds. Zyger says, yes, Greg, Thousand Miles is better. Now, again, I've told my Vanessa Carlton stories where I, her, when that, when, the, when A Thousand Miles dropped as a single, mm -hmm. I went on, uh, uh, what, the LimeWire, and I downloaded all the music I could of hers, but all it was was her performance in LA trying to get picked up, and I heard all the songs, and I memorized them, and then when I got A Thousand Miles, I got the, uh, the song, it was all different. They changed certain lyrics and stuff, and I knew the original lyrics, and I thought that was really cool. So don't get me wrong, I'm, a, I'm an OG Vanessa fan, too. Mm -hmm. This is not me putting down Vanessa. Yeah. I'm just making sure. No, I get it, I get it. Okay. Well, then now we got to start a new campaign to get Vanessa Carlton, everybody. Remember when we tried to get The Rock? Yeah. We'll never stop trying. The thing about Kind of Funny Live is we all just got to believe. You know? That's the thing. Who's going to be there? We don't fucking know. <laughs> when Cisco showed up last year, we didn't expect that we to happen. We were totally like, happen. yeah, we were like, oh, let's see if this one actually happens. So my thing is, I'm still not ruling out The Rock. All right. So Maybe he's going to surprise us. <laughs> now, here's the thing. <laughs> oh, my God. She's coming here April 10th as well. That's I can be seeing Vanessa days. Carlton fucking left and right. Oh my God. Who's this Tristan? Happen? Do you know Tristan? Tristan? Tristan. He's, no. playing, in, he's playing at the Rio Theater? Or mm -hmm. she? Sky no Steel is also playing. Well, guys, I don't. What day is April 10th? Man, there's a lot of shit happening today. Vanessa Carlton! <laughs> Invincible! You can get your ticket for Kind of Funny Live right now at kindoffunny.com slash kfl 3 it's going to be a damn good time. It will be a really good time. That Want to I read the guarantee. rest of them subs? Oh, sure. Is that me now? Yeah. I was going to start working on Vanessa Carlton. Sorry. Soul Rise 510, Aeon 358, Aeon. Electric Buddha, The Funky Ninja, I Root Groot. So much hype for this Invincible movie. I hope it's more than one flick. Me too. Uh, Richie, be good. I also hope it's good. More life to everybody at Kind of Funny. Okay, heart. Uh, Professor underscore B14. Keep it up, guys. Love the content. Oliver Brousseau, Drew Baca 1313, AK Wolfie. Love everything you guys do. Keep it up. We can get Vanessa Carlton here. This is how it works. We can bring her in for a fucking show. Show her we are not crazy. She comes in, the desk isn't even here, it's just a piano. We Fucking do the play. morning show from a piano <laughs> with Vanessa Carlton. I guess you guys a piano. Dude, you're making dreams come true. You're making Greg Miller freshman year Mizzou dreams Here's come true. Here's the deal. Yeah. You beat Zyger. You get $50 from Sean Pitts. We use that $50 to buy the best piano $50 can buy. What I sure, it might be one of those shitty little keyboard Casios, cat ones. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? It'll be fucking What amazing. I kind of like is the idea that Sean brings the, comes in with the $50 bill, and mm. I just shred it in front of him. That's pretty cool. And I'm like, I, don't get me wrong, I really needed that money. <laughs> but this felt good, Pits. 
Uh, AK Wolfie, I already did right. Love everything you guys do. Keep it up. A game of dragons. Oh my god, Invincible. Please not Efron, though. You are fucking crazy, sir. R.L. Cooper. Bubs. A buoy. Uh, Jake's. 1-1. One, one. S-M-C-8-5. Greg, it's real. Like Skybound's tweeting about it. Oh, yeah. It. And Nick Scarpino retweeted it. Kaylin's Glitch. Doc Online. Matty Ice, 17. Monkey J Terry, 20XX. Uh, T Man T, 10. Can Greg give me an L.O. Governor? L.O. Governor! Uh, Powders W. Given that Amazon Prime love. Keep fucking that chicken. Uh, T M I G 2 1. Always funny. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, Mem Bird Man. Subscribing. Bird Man. Waiting for that King of Tokyo Let's Play. Analog Gaming. Yeah, yeah. Richard DS. I'll make him do it one day. Hot Toddy. Is that the one where we go and play the giant game? It's a board game. Oh, no. 76. I miss PS. I love you. XOXO. I understand. We're still trying to figure out what the right thing is. More announcements one day. But a lover. Uh, Spew of Blah. M C H L. Michael. 796. Matt, just kidding. Just on LaRue. Hollow Joey. Andrew P. Bear. Awesome. Box Breath 21. Dakota. 1099. Everlast and Dread. Switch to my Prime for my sub. Thanks for the content. A saggy nut. Celebrating seven months of sucking down of long black. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Javo 1984, agent of dank, identify zero, longtime homie, happy to support. Fuck him up. Fuck him up, Alf. We will continue to fuck him up for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Morning Show for April 4th. It is a Tuesday. There's a lot of great games out today. Persona 5, you got to get it. Drawn to, drawn to life? No, drawn to death? I don't know. I haven't played the final version. I'm looking forward to playing it a little bit tonight. Parappa, I'm excited about, but I heard the in input sucks. Dude, Para I, mean, I played the demo of Parappa. Yeah. Holy fuck, why did they not add a calibration thing? Don't do this to Patapon. I hope, I mean, I, I haven't heard if the final game has it or not. But. I mean, I, I tweeted about today. I'm like, oh, what a bunch of great, you know, great day for games or whatever. And some guy's like, Pat, no, Parappa does not hold up. There's, it's fucked up. Well, so the game doesn't hold up. It's that it, the, it didn't get fixed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The music just doesn't work on, a, on modern TVs. <sighs> If you didn't know, we'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. with it's all true. the nudie, nerdy news you need. To, nudie? Nerdy nudie. news you need to run All that through. nudie news. All that nudie news. No! Oh. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.